Okay, from the top. Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance releases in just under a week now, and I couldn't be more excited. I already did a one hour love letter to the original, and plan on doing the same for Vengeance once I beat it. But for now, I want to take a page out of Atlas's book and rapid fire 50 predictions in hopes I have going into Vengeance, whether it be about gameplay or story. I just want to list out what I hope to see coming up. So without further ado, let's get started. Number 1. More emphasis on story. This is something at the forefront of Vengeance's marketing, and was the main complaint I and many others had. In specific regard to this, I'm hoping for... Number 2. Yoko is not a forced character. A common trope Atlas re-release waifus fall into is being forced into the spotlight while having either no particular character, or their arcs just start way too late into the game. However, with Yoko being introduced early, and being relevant throughout, I'm hoping she can break this trend. Number 3. Tsukiyomi Nahobino This is the most common theory for the new Nahobino form, and I think it would be pretty cool. Number 4. Shakan is more in depth. The Demon King's Castle and Temple of Eternity from the base game were panned for being too short and bare bones, so my big hope is that Shakan is both longer and more meaningful. Number 5. Yuzuru and Miyazu are actual characters this time. They both deserve it. Number 6. There are more alignment based quests where you can choose what side you're on. These were some of my personal favorite quests in Base 5, and I hope there's more of them. 7. Important quests are fully voiced. This already seems to be the case with the Kansu questline, and I'm hoping it descends to Amanasako, Beyon, and Shiva at minimum. Number 8. Dagda is still voiced by Xander Mobis. Even if he just grunts, I want this so badly because he was the highlight of 4 Apocalypse. Number 9. Idun is still broken. Eden is best girl and you can fight me on that. 10. Panagaya Tao is actually worth using. And she also doesn't leave your party in the endgame. Number 11. Yoko has an evolved form just like Tao, along with a special debilitate skill. 12. Different Makatsuhi skills are worth using. With a few exceptions, Makatsuhi skills paled in comparison to the default critical. So with combo moves being tied to the Makatsuhi gauge, I'm hoping this promotes more experimentation. 13. Ice is still the dominant element of the endgame. A non-insignificant amount of endgame bosses were weak to ice, so I hope this is still the case so I can take advantage of the funny stuff you can do with the new trait system. Speaking of which... 14. Traits aren't too game-breaking. If we can avoid another Country Maker or Junpei Crit Amp, that would be great. That said though... 15. With the exception of super bosses. I want Demi Fiend's trait to be busted. 16. Shinjuku is the biggest map in the game. With increased hardware capabilities, I want Atlas to go all out with scale. 17. Human party members can interact with each other in demon haunts. It's one thing to have them be there, but another for them to interact. Number 18. The same is true for demons. 19. Demon Negotiation stays relevant. No mainline game has ever really been able to achieve this to my knowledge, so I thought it would be cool if Vengeance would be the first. 20. Knowledge of tools is available from the start. Demons using items was such a useful ability, and it's a shame you don't have it for the first area. 21. Yakumo actually communicates with us. Anyone who saw my first 5 video will know what I mean. 22. Do something with Goko. He was such a nothing burger character in the original, so either cut him or make him actually do something. 23. There will be more physical element moves beyond just the Draco Strikes. 24. Yakumo and Nua are guest party members for a bit. 25. The canon of creation has demon haunts. 26. There aren't too many route specific quests in the canon of vengeance. 27. Belzebub is a boss fight and pays homage to his Nocturne fight. In addition, Death Lies either pierces or Belzebub has Impaler's Animus. 29. Mastema spams Megidolon. 30. Additional super bosses will have similar AI patterns to Shiva. 31. 
the Repel or Drain Chi strat will no longer work on Demifiend, and doing so will result in immediate Gyre Rage. 33. Demeter's questline will have one more fight. 34. You can fight Masakado by beating the 4 Deva questline. 35. There's a new super boss beyond just Shiva and Demifiend. 36. Said super boss is Satan, and is specifically Apocalypse Satan. Granted, I know there was a lore reason why Satan was like that and it doesn't work outside of Apocalypse, but his design is so cool and I'd love to see it in 3D. 37. Dekarabia and Fornius have a combo attack. 38. Ariok is killed by the Kaditsu. Cut. The, the snake ladies. To show how strong they are. 39. The snake ladies aim to resurrect a version of Samael, who would destroy everything. 40. Mastema nukes Shinjuku to try to stop this, and this is what prompts us to go to Shikan. 41. Either Yakumo sacrifices himself to stop Samael, or, 42, become Samael in a become the very thing I hate to destroy my enemies kind of way. 43. Azazel is the main focus of a quest and makes reference to Soul Hackers 1 or 2. 44. The miracles that help with fusion accidents actually make a difference. 45. There's an achievement for beating Ishtar at full power. 46. There's an early bad law and chaos ending just like for Apocalypse. The former you side with Mastema, and the latter you side with the Kaditsu. 48. Sophia has more of a role this time, given her design similarities to Yoko. 49. The limit for completing time quests is actually reasonable. And finally, number 50. The Anzu Death Squad still have hitboxes the size of a football stadium. Well, these are my hopes for Vengeance, and if you like what you saw here, consider liking and subscribing, as well as sharing your own predictions as I'd love to read them. Until next time, this is Jaffinator, signing off.